uh, Steampunk Star Raisin, AmberStreet.com here. Uh, I went to Iron Man 3 last night, and all I could say is it really fucking pissed me off. It really fucking pissed me off. I was not only greatly disappointed, but I was offended by the way they handled some of the goddamn characters. And, uh, <laughs> you know, sorry if I'm using profanity here, but I'm, I'm passionate about this because I feel superhero mythology is important to get it right. Uh, as a fan of the comics... And as a reader of the comics, um, let me tell you some of the things I really hated about the movie because the pros outweigh, I mean, the cons outweigh the pros. The first thing, and I want to warn you here, there's spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie you and you don't want to be spoiled about it as to the plot, then you might want to exit the video now. Anyway, the first thing was the way they handled the Mandarin. That, you know, as a, he basically was an actor who was a fake villain. He didn't have any superpowers. And he was just basically a front man for a CEO executive type. And it's just, the, you know, it's misleading in the trailers to say the least that the Mandarin is the main villain. He's really just a, the, you know, the, the patsy, so to speak, uh, for another villain who's a CEO who has the extremist powers. Um, which they're following the extremist storyline from the Iron Man comics, which the extreme, if you've ever read the extremist storyline, which I have, it's actually really, really good. Really, really good Iron Man storyline. Any, anywho, so yeah, I mean, the, and the Mandarin has no superpowers, and he's just a frontman actor. I was greatly offended by that, because it's not true to the character in any way. It's only the Mandarin in name. It could have been an awesome movie if you had a real Mandarin character, because Mandarin, like Iron Man, relies on technology of his rings to give him superpowers. He doesn't have any power of his own. Okay, that's that was um, reason number one that Iron Man 3 fucking sucked balls. Reason number two... The movie should have been called um, Tony Stark, Agent of Stark Industries, Super Assassin, instead of Iron Man, because he rarely ever dons the armor. Uh, I guess uh, Robert Downey Jr., getting paid $50 million, that's what I heard he got paid for Iron Man 3, getting paid $50 million to do Iron Man 3, he needed to justify his own existence and as much face time as possible, so... Man, I just couldn't be wearing this suit. I need I need to do you know most of my FaceTime on screen so I could I could justify the fifty million dollar price tag. That's what it felt like because very small po uh, percentage of the film do, does he even use his suits or does he even wear a suit? And the whole scene where he he goes and takes out the Mandarin with just wearing only a glove and a handful of electronics was just silly to say the least yeah it made me laugh a little bit but it was just incredibly unrealistic based on uh, the mythology that they had built up and it just didn't it, I don't know it just didn't jive with me it kind of rubbed me the wrong way okay so that's reason number two reason number three and this is a little bit more of a minor reason but it still bothered me uh, Iron Patriot and War Machine were not the same person they were two different characters that could have been interesting, too. They could have done a whole Spider-Man tie-in. No. We have to fuck it up even more. Uh, War Machine, uh, to me, it's not true to the character War Machine, which I've read the War Machine comics. Um, I haven't read the recent ones, but it's not true to the character War Machine to become Iron Patriot. Iron Patriot was nor in the comic books was Norman Oswell, a.k.a. the Green Goblin, and he was attempting to become a superhero. And he had an older version of Iron Man's armor, and he repainted it to be the Iron Patriot, and then he was a member of Dark Avengers, uh, which was basically kind of a um, a criticism of the War on Terror and how, how like, uh, United States as a superhero is becoming also the supervillain and are kind of dark you know you know kind of a dark gritty twist to it and that's that was iron patriot he was kind of an anti-hero slash villain who was masquerading as a hero that you didn't get that he was just oh you know i i'm war machine now i wanted to to repaint my suit and become iron patriot and uh just and then you know 
Iron Patriot suit get, suit gets taken over, and he, he doesn't wear again. You know, he's not even wearing his suit throughout most of the movie. Uh, he finally gets it back at the end of the movie, but I don't know. And the fourth reason that I had an issue with this movie was. Tony Stark quitting being Iron Man and he destroys all of his suits because he just doesn't want to be Iron Man anymore. It seemed like they just wanted to to terminate and finish off the franchise. We're like, we're not through fucking it up. Let's make Tony Stark get with Pepper Potts and as the love of his life and let's make him quit being Iron Man for some facetious reason, which makes no sense. Because to me, if, if uh, Pepper Potts actually really loved him... Then she wouldn't. It wouldn't matter if he was Iron Man or not. And in the in the comic books, Pepper Potts uh, m- uh, married uh, Happy Hogan. She she ended up having a brief fling with Stark. I think she worked as, uh, from what I remember, she worked as his secretary. But she didn't actually end up with him in the long run. But in, of course, in recent years, they've rebooted Iron Man a couple times, and um, I haven't kept up with the recent comics. But um, Anywho, um, so yeah, that was the fourth reason. The things that I did like about it, there was a couple things I did like about it. I loved the all the the flying suits. The special effects were awesome. Um, there were some points that were kind of funny and entertaining. Um, but, and Robert Downey Jr. is, as always, as convincing as Iron Man and... Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, her performance was good. Uh, you got kind of a teaser of her being rescue, where she briefly wears the Iron Man suit in the beginning of the movie. That was kind of cool, but then it, they don't follow up with it. I would have loved to have seen a full rescue character in the movie as well. That could have added more a, of a dynamic. But I mean, it was they 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 seem to like to. Uh, the butcher of the comics in the movie version, and you saw this in Iron Man 2. I did not like Iron Man 2 either. I mean, there were things I liked about Iron Man 2, but the biggest thing about Iron Man 2 is that they, they screwed up Titanium Man by combining him with Whiplash, which in the comics they were two different people, but they combined both elements because Titanium Man was Russian. And so it just... Overall, the movie sucked. I mean, it's not the worst movie I've ever seen, but I... It really fucking pissed me off the way they handled the manor, and it really fucking pissed me off. And uh, I don't understand why it's getting a really good score on Rotten Tomatoes. I guess they paid to give good reviews. That's what I hear nowadays with, with uh, movies, is that if you spend a lot of money on a big-budget movie, you can go in and get p- professional reviewers to review a film for you and give it a positive review, even though they may not care one way or the other about the movie and uh, I'm ha- I have a feeling that as more people see this movie that the, that the ratings on IMDB and uh, Rotten Tomatoes are going to go down well, anyway enough said this is Steampunk Star Raisin uh, out you have a nice day and I will see you 25 billion years I fucking will <laughs>